All right, what's going on, guys? It's Nando Pack again with another video. Thanks for stopping by. And today we're going to be talking about the new Google Home Hub 2 or Nest Hub 2, whatever you want to call this thing. Point blank is this is the second iteration of this hub. Now, I'm going to make this video kind of quick and straight to the point um, because honestly, it's my first time using this. But there's only a couple select features and functionalities I want to talk about, point out. Of course, I'm going to talk about some things that are negatives to me, things that I don't like and wish that they would approve on. Um, but yeah, feel free to subscribe. Feel free to hit that like button if you find this video to be useful. Now, this is a 7-inch uh, screen. There is no camera, so you cannot do any kind of um, Google Duo or Zoom or any kind of video conferencing call with this device. What you see up top here are sensors and what Google has created is a sensor heavy device that's going to do things specifically like sleep tracking and we're going to get more uh, into that here in a second. Okay, so when you turn on the hub, if you've had the first one, I'm sure this looks very familiar to you. You have your home screen, if you will. So to the left, I have my weather. Then you have some options here, play relaxing sounds, then you can scroll over and you can go into different tabs. You've got your home screen. If you scroll over, you've got your more of your home screen, how you slept, um, photos, household contacts, and you can keep scrolling. All right. Wellness is basically where you're going to break down your sleep. Um, today or last night, I slept eight hours and seven minutes. According to that, you can keep going. Then you've got your home control your climate routines. I've got some Nest thermostats that I can control from here. Then you've got your media. You can communicate because it does have a microphone. So even though it says make a video call, it's going to be an audio call because you can't see anything on this device. Um, or it doesn't have a camera. More tabs and then a discover tab. All right. Now here's where I'm going to get a little frustrated. Did you guys see how I have to kind of click around to get places? Well, Google doesn't make the gestures very user friendly, if you will. Okay. What I mean by that is if I'm on one tab and I want to get back to the other tab, I'm doing a lot of poking around and a lot of scrolling to get there. That's definitely a negative, something I haven't been enjoying, something that when it's beside me on my bedside, like it is now, I don't want to waste time having to do that. If there's something I want to see and if there's something I want to do, I want to be able to get there and get there quickly. Now, Google has incorporated gestures. Now, those gestures, to my knowledge, are more so to turn off like a clock or be able to kind of like wave across. But as you can see, it's not really working. It only kind of works when I want to turn off a clock. Uh, so those are, are part of the negatives, right? If you're going to incorporate, if you're going to introduce some functionality and some feature like that, then make sure it's not half-baked. Not enjoying that at all. I'm also noticing that this device is pretty slow. I'm not sure what kind of processing chip this thing has, but it just feels laggy, okay? When I'm clicking around, when I'm moving back, it just feels laggy. There's a second or two delay when I'm doing things. I also don't like the media aspect of it, all right? You have the ability to watch YouTube, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, but you don't have the ability to search. I don't have a search bar. So when I go to YouTube and I actually click on it, it's going to kind of recommend, and you see how long that took to load up? It's going to recommend things that I've watched and things that I may want to watch again. That's great, but why can't we have a little search bar on the top where I can start quickly typing on the screen to get to where I want to get to? I know that you can use your voice, but again, that lag is not the same as if you had a Pixel phone or you're using the Google Assistant and you want to get somewhere. I don't like that. So I find myself not really using YouTube and Netflix because why do I want Netflix to recommend a show for me that I don't want to watch? I want to search for something and I want to watch it. If they at least brought it down to like, for example, your most recently viewed things, that'd be different, but that's not the case. So I'm not enjoying how the media is being portrayed or given to us here on, on this Google Hub Nest Hub, or whatever you want to call it, okay? So same thing goes through these tabs, all right? Everything that you're doing on these tabs, you're clicking, you're proding around, you're flicking your wrist, you're touching the screen. 
And that's cool, but I think that there has to be a better way to interact with it. This is a seven inch, just seven inch device, seven inch screen. It's meant to be at your bedside. And when you're reaching over because you're sleepy, you don't want to be hitting things, fumbling things, knocking over your phone, so forth and so on. Those are my negatives. The processing power, the ability to watch and consume media on it, the lack of camera. Yes, it's a $99 device, so the price point is there. And that is a price point that's going to be attractive to lots of people. Okay. Let's talk about the positives. I do like that this is a good alarm. I do like that this sounds well. When you are listening to music, when you do have your alarm go off, the speaker sounds good. Sounds rich, sounds full. Definitely more than you need to be by your bedside and to wake you up and to enjoy some music. No concerns there. Okay. My favorite feature though, my favorite feature, and the reason why I bought this device is the sleep tracking. Now, that whole sleep tracking thing is something that tons of different companies have been trying to figure out. I mean, I use an Apple Watch and I don't really like the sleep tracking on it. I have used and continue to have Fitbits, even though I'm not using it right now. So the ability to be able to track your sleep without having a device on is clutch. It's something that intrigues me, something that excites me. And I'm going to be honest with you. If I go here to wellness and I go to sleep, I think this, this thing is pretty impressive and pretty accurate. I do recall getting in bed around that 6.30, 6.40 point, and I do remember waking up right around that track. It has been really accurate. It really has. Now, multiple people, it's not going to track. If you have a second person in bed with you and you care about how they're sleeping, go ahead and get them one for their bedside. This is meant for one person and one person sleep tracking only. You want to kind of angle it at your torso. It's going to guide you through that installation period, if you will, um, but that's how that functions. It's going to track your snoring. It's going to track your restlessness. It's going to track all kinds of different things. And you can kind of scroll through and look at that. I'm not feeling very, I'm not feeling very well here the last few days. It caught me coughing. It's caught me snoring like way more than I ever snore. So that's kind of embarrassing. Um, and then you've got your respiratory rate. That I'm not sure exactly if that's that accurate. It's got these sensors. It's got these microphones. They're going to pick up how you breathe. Um, how you snore, and it's going to collect that data for you. And I think it's fairly accurate. Now, if you're someone who doesn't want that kind of level of, of, of monitoring, you can turn that off, all right? So you don't have to have that on. And Google has given you all of this functionality for free. Now, they say it's through the year, and then you're going to have to pay for it. That's a huge negative. I don't know why they're doing that. I think that once this is a feature that you have to pay for, I think a lot of people are not going to want this. I know personally I would not buy this device if I had to pay for this feature. I think they should give us this kind of basic functionality now. And then if you want to pay for it, just like you do with Fitbit premium and all kinds of other fitness tracking devices, then give us more in-depth information and data and a way to collect it and view that data. I think a lot of people will pay for that. I think your average consumer will not pay for that. Again, I would not have bought this device if I had to pay for this kind of sleep tracking. But for right now, it's free. And for right now at 99 US dollars, I think it's wonderful. I think it makes this device worth it if you're someone who cares about how you're sleeping and how you're doing. Um, so you can use this data. You can use this information to figure out how you're doing. Okay. It'll break it down for you. And I think it's very accurate. And of course you have the app, the Google fit app to go through and tell you how you're doing. Now, obviously guys, <laughs> 6 in the morning, I work overnight. All right. So don't freak out and think that I'm just going to bed at 6 48 to get to work at like nine or 10 in the morning. Um, but you have this data here that you can also look over on your phone and do with it as you please. That's my favorite feature of this second iteration of the Google Nest Hub, the seven inch version. I know there's more to uncover, I know there's more to talk about, but to recap, audio sounds great. Screen is vibrant and rich, definitely more than capable to be your bedside alarm clock. The ability to listen to music, and sure, even though it has some cover sums when it comes to watching YouTube and Netflix and any other kind of media, you do have that ability. You can rotate through your Google Photos if you want it to be a photo alarm clock. I don't like that it's laggy. I don't like how, you, how much you have to poke and kind of hope that Google's AI guides you to the media that you want to see and listen. Um, I don't like that there's no camera, even though I understand it based on the price point. I love the fact that this, in my opinion, is a very good sleep tracking device. I don't like that we're going to have to pay for this functionality here at the end of the year, however much that costs. 
Let me know in the comment section below, guys, if there's anything in particular you want me to check out and look into. Please feel free to hit that subscribe button. More videos are coming as well. And like always, I'll catch you in the next video. It was Nando. Peace, salute, and adios.